night, guys. It is just another hot, sticky, hopefully soon to be stormy Sunday afternoon here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. And that would be Easter Sunday 2022, which I think is April 17th, 2022. And, uh,. <clears throat> So guys, as you could pretty much do with any single holiday or, or any other day of the year, what I had planned to do today was looking at the environmental impacts of Easter. You know, all, uh, of Easter eggs and chocolate and just all the way that Easter or what Easter has become uh, is doing to this planet and you know it's like any one of these as I say I've done it with the Mother's Day roses I've done it with the Valentine's candy the 4th of July fireworks on and on and uh, so I was uh, in my research it just one of the one of the many articles about how uh, Easter, the Easter Bunny is destroying the planet, was this sentence, which really says uh, says it all. That is all that needs to be said on the subject. <clears throat> the fact that our Easter eggs have quite a wide amount of damage to the environment should not stop us. That should not stop us from enjoying the things we love. Get out there and enjoy it while you still can. The fact that anything and everything that you enjoy is destroying the planet at this point should make no difference. Get out there and enjoy your chocolate Easter bunny or whatever uh, the hell you want to enjoy. Uh, go ahead, live your damn life. <clears throat> yes. If, if we were to avoid all products that cause damage to the environment, our day-to-day -day lives would look nothing like they do now. Almost every, well, almost every, yeah, I guess 99.99%, almost every product we use causes harm to the environment, whether directly or indirectly. And that's really all you need to say on the subject is everything that humans touch from the day we're born till the day we die. Every single thing that humans touch is bad for the environment. So you can, uh, I, I guess you can be a breatharian uh, you know, living in a naked in a cave somewhere, uh, or you can get out there and enjoy it while you still can. Which is why uh, I'm gonna get out there. So, guys, just letting you know, tomorrow morning I am going to get out there and enjoy it while I still can. I'm gonna pack up my planet eating gas sucking truck with all of my planet eating. Uh, chocolate and I'm sure my tequila is eating the planet uh, and everything else and I'm gonna head out uh, to a folk festival to the Old Settlers Music Festival for Earth Day I found out that uh, I am going to be enjoying Earth Day uh, while I still can making music with my lovable clueless normie friends so I will, I, I, I am going to unplug from the damn Dunasphere. Uh, I'm going to take eight days off. I, I'm going to try not to open 
the news. I, I'm hoping there's no internet where I'm going. Uh, and, and just get away uh, from the doomosphere for a week. Uh, and, and, and just see how the rest of life lives. Can't wait to see how many people, when is Earth Day? Friday, I'm April 22nd. Yeah, Friday is going to be Earth Day. Let's see if anybody at the Old Settlers Music Festival mentions Earth Day. But before I go, I just thought we would have a little bit of fun here on Easter Sunday. Uh, so you can decide whether or not this uh, article from the Telegraph is, uh, it belongs in the Doomosphere. I guess time will tell whether this is a chronicle of the collapse or not. Okay, have I ever talked about space aliens on Collapse Chronicles? from the Telegraph over there in England. Stop revealing Earth's location to dangerous aliens, NASA warned. NASA must be stopped from revealing Earth's location to dangerous aliens, an Oxford scientist has warned. The U.S. Space Agency has proposed broadcasting a message dubbed Beacon in the Galaxy. A message dubbed Beacon in the Galaxy intended to greet extraterrestrial intelligences. It is an updated form of the Arecibo message broadcast in 1974 for the same purpose. Improvements in digital technology mean that more information can now be broadcast to aliens. The proposed new message includes basic mathematical and physical concepts to establish a universal means of communication, followed by information on the biochemical composition of life on Earth. It also includes the solar system's location relative to major clusters of stars along with digitized depictions of our solar system itself, Earth's surface, and male and female humans. The message concludes with an invitation for intelligences to respond. Yes, can't see what the problem here could be, but Anders Sandberg, a senior research fellow at Oxford's Future of Humanity Institute, warned that sharing such information with intelligent life presents a risk that must be considered. Dr. Sandberg told the Telegraph that although the chance of our message, you know, actually reaching an alien civilization was low, quote, it has such a high impact that you actually need to take this rather seriously, close quote. <coughs> he said that the giggle factor surrounding the search for extraterrestrial intelligence meant that, quote, many people just refuse to take anything related to it seriously, which is a shame because this is important stuff, close quote. Overall, said Dr. Sandberg, both the risk and the potential benefit were small. Given the difficulty of traversing vast spans of interstellar space, a message received by even by a very advanced civilization might amount to little beyond, as Dr. Sandberg put it, a postcard saying, wish 
you were here. Yes. The Arecibo message is one of several broadcasts, including some advertisements. We are already sending advertisements selling shit to space aliens. And that's probably what they're receiving. Uh, the Arecibo message is one of several broadcasts, including some advertisements already sent by humans into space. Said Dr. Sandberg, quote, the poor aliens might already be getting various messages sent for all sorts of reasons, you know, mainly to sell them stuff. <clears throat> A better approach than individual groups firing off ad hoc missives, Dr. Sandberg suggested, would be humanity coordinating as a species. Quote, we're not great at coordinating, but I think it is a nice exercise, he said. Toby Ord, Dr. Sandberg's colleague at the Future of Humanity Institute, made similar arguments in The Precipice, a book published in 2020 in which he analyzed existential risks facing humanity. Dr. Ord suggested that it might be wise to have public discussions before sending messages to aliens pointing out that even passive SETI, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, listening for their messages could hold dangers as the message could be designed to entrap us. Quote, these dangers are small but poorly understood and not yet well managed. <clears throat> Overall, wrote Dr. Ord, quote, the main relevant question is the ratio of peaceful to hostile civilizations. We have very little evidence about whether this is high or low, and there is no scientific consensus. Given that the downside could be much bigger than the upside, this does not sound to me like a good situation in which to take active steps toward contact. Close quote. Uh, the NASA scientists proposed that the new message be broadcast from FAST which is some telescope from China, and the SETI Institute's Allen Telescope Array in Northern California. No date has been offered for the broadcast. Scientists, including Stephen Hawking, have in the past warned that these messages could be risky. In a documentary released in 2010, Professor Hawking pointed out that on Earth, interactions between civilizations on different levels of technological advancement tend not to work out very well for the lesser advanced group. Quoting Stephen Hawking, quote, we only have to look at ourselves to see how intelligent life might to might develop into something we would not want to meet. He said, citing the arrival of Europeans in the Americas. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. So anyway, guys, uh, well, you, you know, of course, I'm looking at the uh, at the potential upsides and downsides. Of course, being a doomer, uh, the upside of uh, of the alien invasion 
is that uh, any alien with a brain, uh, you know, some sort of alien ecologist, some sort of planetary ecologist, any alien with a brain would be here for about 10 minutes and understand that there was one problem on planet Earth that needed to be solved. Well, eight billion problems. That uh, if, if, if this was a benevolent uh, alien civilization coming to save planet Earth, what they would do is eradicate humans off of it. That they're the only way to save this planet from humans is maybe to have the space aliens come save planet Earth from the humans. So from that angle, uh, I am 100% in favor of the alien invasion coming to save the planet from the plague phase of humans. Uh, but of course, uh, whether or not they did that, whether, is that a space alien? Is that, is that a UFO coming to save the planet? Uh, of course, the, the much bigger chance uh, if, if, if space aliens do arrive here, they probably will take out humans is the first thing they need to do because we're their competitors. It's going to have nothing to do with uh, their uh, wanting to save planet Earth. It's just that we're going to be competing for the resources they want to get here, so they are going to get rid of us uh, so they can have the resources here on planet Earth all to themselves and uh, Earth is is just going to be what Earth is already becoming uh, under the uh, energy transition and that is one big strip mine. Uh, th this planet is going to mean one thing to space aliens and that is a big mine. That is all they're going to care about. Uh, but anyway, we're doing quite enough of that with no help from space aliens. And with that, guys, i got to wrap this up because it's time for the little dog to get a B-A-T-H. You need to get a B-A-T-H. You're a dirty little dog. We have to give the dirty little dog a B-A-T-H. And uh, as I say, guys, I am heading off to the Old Settlers Music Festival to get out there and enjoy my planet-saving lifestyle while I still can with my lovable, clueless, normie friends making music to celebrate Earth Day 2022. Oh yes, and I highly suggest you get out there and make music with your clueless, lovable, normie friends while you still can. I will see you sometime, good Lord, after uh, probably sometime around April 26th or April 27th, assuming there is still a global industrial civilization left by April 27th. Bye, guys.